Hey everybody, it's Scott with the GM's Tower, the Keeper's Tower, I guess tonight. And we are continuing, maybe concluding, our investigation into the mysterious death <clears throat> of Frank Charlton. And uh, it's, it's an adventure that's in the Miskatonic University supplement that's called A Little Knowledge. And um, I think you guys are getting pretty close to the end of this to sorting some things out. But let's go ahead and introduce everybody that's here tonight. Let me start with Eli this time. Hi, I'm Eli from the Crit Heads podcast. I play Freddie Dobbs, the investigative journalist. And uh, yeah, that's about all I got to say. Very good. And anybody that hasn't watched or heard the Crit Heads podcast, where can they hear it? And how do you spell it? Because it's a really good podcast. It's a C-R-I-T-H-E-A-D-Z podcast. And yeah, uh, um, we play Call of Cthulhu 7th edition pulp. Cthulhu, and yeah, we have a good time. Good job. Yeah, it's very, very well done. All right, Jim, tell us about your, uh, tell us about you and your guy. Yep, I'm Jim, up here in Minneapolis. I'm playing Thaddeus Delby. He's an alias from, uh, alienist from Miskatonic. Well, I'm sorry, he's from, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, from Arkham up in Massachusetts, and, uh, lots of people seem to think he has a problem with illicit drugs <laughs> but it's all above board i absolutely promise yeah it's all med all medicinal you have this vision of one day putting together this rock concert and they're calling it woodstock <laughs> but that's sure, not, that's not going to happen until after the second world war and then there'll be this other one called korea and there'll be this vietnam thing you just have all these visions of the future um <laughs> all right uh brian Hello, I'm Brian, Southern Minnesota. I am playing Dakota Franklin, an archaeologist who has a uh, uh, an eye twitch every every time he hears the name uh, Jones. <laughs> and it's such a common name. All right, Mike. Last but not least. Hi, I'm Mike. I also hail from Minnesota. I am playing Walter Wexler the third. He is a forty-year-old. Professor at Arkham or at Miskatonic University, born and raised in Arkham, specializing in anthropology and history. Very good. So last time when we wrapped up, you guys were in Claude Owen's dorm room. You had found a, a squirrel looks like it had been dissected and yet somehow was still alive. You had uh, looked at several papers. You noted that there were some reference to maybe a place in the library where further information might be and um yeah i think that's where you guys we wrapped it up last time so let's just pick it up we'll just you know this, the scene will come up you're still in the dorm room heavy for formaldehyde smell and uh yeah where do you want to go from there i was wondering does h west and reanimate does that can i connect the dots on that uh, uh, give me, none of you are in the, are in, yeah, I mean, if you guys, as a, um, if you guys all want to roll, but primarily the two of you that are professors there, you might, but you're going to need to do at least, you probably need at least to do a hard, a hard success. So you just intelligence rolls. Okay, Wexler. Dakota. All right, so Wexler, you've got a vague sort of just kind of sends, you know, just kind of hits a little button, just a vague memory of another student that's kind of like Claude Owen, very intelligent, very focused, very, you know, separated, and you heard the faculty generally talk about him, and his name was Herbert West, and he disappeared um, some years later. But he kept he kept apparently trying to work on uh, reanimating corpses was what he was trying to work on, and his idea was to cure death basically. But you never found out what happened to him. He just kind of disappeared. H West, maybe that um, might speak of the uh, former student here at Miskatonic by the name of Herbert West, and uh, yeah, he was. Uh, into some pretty shady dealings uh, trying to reanimate the dead. So clearly that's what uh, young Mr. Owen is, is, is doing. He 
seen the squirrel and um, perhaps he tried to have a go at Charlton at one point and it just didn't work out. Um, but we don't, we're not seeing anything here and we're tr trying to pick up maybe a, some kind of a clue or um, maybe he left a note. We didn't find anything on maybe where he was headed. Nothing except the point, the pointer to the library files. Okay. I mean, admittedly, it looks like Owen cleared out of this room in a hurry. So he probably wouldn't have stopped to take notes and say, hey, just in case, I'm going this way. And out of curiosity, uh, just thinking back on uh, Ariana, Gra Ariana Grande's house. <laughs> with the... <laughs> See, it stuck, didn't it? Mm. With the, uh, the stuff carved into the floor, does he have anything on the floor? No, not in this dorm room. No, there's nothing. I mean, you, there's the chemicals that have spilled out and stuff like that, but other than that, no. That's a good question, though. Well, Dr. Delby, maybe we should take your advice here. We have uh, a lead at the library. Head over there and see if we can't uh, peruse the shelves. Hmm. But... Uh... But before we do that, maybe we should go talk with, uh, maybe we should brief the university professor and this time get a handwritten note which says, give these guys some good cooperation this time and don't bother me with a phone call, <laughs> if you know what I mean. That's that's a great idea. Okay. Maybe we should let the president know and, what we're, and, we're up to. And, and offer them some coffee and a little bit of respect. I like it. <laughs> Well done. So, okay, so you want to go see Dr. Wayne Scott, or uh, Professor, uh, sorry, President Wayne Scott, and kind of give him an update. So you guys can yes. certainly do that. Okay. So you're just, are you going to, tell me, tell me what you're going to do in the room. Are you just going to lock it and leave it mostly as it was, or take things, rearrange things? What are you doing? What do you take? take what do you leave? All that. Say, take what? Take the squirrel and put it in the girl's dorm room. Yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that would go well. You're obviously a well-liked professor at the school. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm if I'm even comfortable leaving that squirrel to be not be not dead. So I don't know if we can uh I don't know burn it or bury at least bury it. I don't I don't know. What do the rest of you think? I think burning it sounds like a good viable option. Sure, like in a barrel outside, we can we can pretend like we're hobos. <laughs> you see, are you gonna be, are you gonna be like a quartet out there singing in, in harmony around the fire? There you go. Got to burn a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it'd be the decent thing to do, and we can pretend like it never happened. <laughs> okay. If you guys want to go do that, you can probably find a burn barrel somewhere out out away from. The quad, I mean, which would probably horrify all the students if you started doing that. I mean, the other alternative is to tell people about it, if you know what I mean. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, we could... We could... We could bring this to Wayne Scott, actually. Maybe he him, knows what to do with it. Yeah, yeah let him deal with it, and, and, and it could... Okay. Probably illustrate the graveness of the situation, no pun intended. Yeah, that's a good point. And then maybe maybe he wouldn't give us any attitude about getting stuff done. I see what right. you're saying. So wrap that thing in a blanket and bring it on over and say, you, you want to give us any more attitude, buddy? You gonna? Uh, I don't know that he's ever given you attitude in the first place, but maybe he has, and I forget that. I know, well, I know it'll, what, yeah. it'll drive home the point, though, to – to what Del Dr. Delby is saying in that we could get a note from him basically giving us carte blanche of the library resources. Okay. I like I like it. So you're gonna leave yeah. it in the are you gonna leave it in the cage or what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah in the cage, I think so. Put a blanket but, but put a blanket over it so you know other people won't have to see it. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then you're gonna leave everything else there? Well, we can bring the papers with and and the lockbox. Okay. 
I mean, it's not really evidence at this point. You're getting close to needing a shopping cart based on all this stuff. Um, The lockbox, the cage, the papers. There's a a good number of papers. There's probably... Perhaps just the squirrel, and then um, Professor Franklin has the has the resource we need for the library. And we could just lock the dorm and kind of leave things as is. And again, I hate to do it, but throw everything in President Wayne Scott's lap and see what he wants to do. Okay. Um, I, uh, I want to take photographs of the room, how we kind of found it too. Okay. Well, you can no longer take it like, like you found it because you kind of messed it up. But other than that, you can take it as it is now. As it is, yes. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Okay. Or, question, Dobbs, is this how we found it? Quote, unquote. Air quotes. Nah, well, I like the way you think. <laughs> um, what is the way you think? <laughs> we didn't we didn't we didn't vandalize anything we just we heard a noise under the bed we found this thing um the room was obviously in this in the state when we walked in we didn't you know the only thing we found was this piece of paper with uh some information that uh you know we could use in the li- in the university library um and that's it this is the way it looked. Yeah, I'll put a spin on it. Okay. <laughs> if they, if we get asked, if they, you know, of course, if no questions are asked, then we, we don't have to say anything. But okay, so I, I'm going to be kind and ask: Are you taking the bottle of mysterious chemicals that you didn't know what it was, or are you leaving it there? Up well, to you. Quick. I think Delby. we should take it. I think we should definitely take it. Get it I analyzed. We take the, I say we take the bottle we found under the bed for sure. Well, that's the one I'm asking about, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one for sure. And you're going to leave the cabinet there and take the squirrel. You're going to you're gonna leave the gun yeah. and take the cannoli. Take the, take the cannoli. Well, yes, that popped into my mind as soon as you said it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to just realized I have to go watch that movie again. <laughs> okay, so you guys lock up. Are you going to just walk back down, give the pass key back, and head on out? I, I think it makes sense. Okay. You head back out. You got a little bundle of squirrel, a little a bo- half a bottle of something. You make your way back. You hand, it to the, you hand the key to the guy, and he just kind of leans back, and he's got this look on his face. And you can tell that he's just like professors. I don't, I don't know which what perfume that you're wearing or cologne that you're wearing, but it's eau de formaldehyde. It's, it sounds smells like I'm in a in a biology lab. Man, that's strong. Yeah, you're wanna you kind of want to keep clear of uh, dorm one twenty one by all means. Well, that was my um, plan all, already. So good. And while you're at it, you might want to stay clear of Claude as well. Okay. That's good to know. Thanks a bunch. What's uh? He sees the little, the little feeble movement under the cloth. He's like, "What? Do, what do you got? Did you find?" He didn't have a pet, did he? It's the. It's all you need to know is it's evidence. You know, okay. a, a young Mister Owen can expect to find hmm. himself expelled from the university. So okay. Um, we'll be talking with uh, President Wayne Scott uh, here shortly, and uh, we'll let him make his final decision none of my business um you guys have a good day glad you found what you were looking for i guess thank you come again <laughs> so you guys are going to go to wayne scott are you just going to go up there not you're not going to make an appointment you're just going to go up there well he they um i believe he said that he wanted it as soon as possible okay he well, that's talked fine. with that woman no I'm, I'm on board with that that's fine so you just kind of but you're gonna yeah. walk you're just gonna walk up there to his office go upstairs nothing between the dorm and wayne scott correct like you're not taking the squirrel into a restaurant and having lunch or anything like that. That's what I'm trying. To say. <laughs> Second lunch, fellas. Second lunch. <laughs> okay, so you make it to the um, the administration hall. You go into Wayne Scott's 
outer office you see his secretary there and she says she's you've seen her before and she says um president wayne scott said when you came in to interrupt him um so if you'll sit for just one second he has someone in there and i'll tell him that you're here and she gets up she walks in there she comes out and immediately after that you see wayne's got come to the door and there's another professor you don't you don't know the name but you've seen this professor and he says i understand let's continue this um in a couple of hours uh, but i have a very important appointment i i can't put off and he just kind of gestures towards you guys gentlemen please and he, he invites you into his office Ooh. i will enter and you and he's he's like as you walk in uh wainscott looks at dobbs and he's like why did the psychiatrist say Ooh, whenever he was walking in? I don't know what he is he on cocaine or something. Um, <laughs> so you walk in, he shuts the door, he sits down, and he goes, "Okay, gentlemen, tell me what the latest is. What have you found?" I hope you're getting to the bottom of this. I don't know how much longer I can contain this. Um, we need an answer, and we need to we need to, the publicity from this to go away. Uh. President, do you remember the name Herbert West? Uh, how do you know that name? Looking directly at his give face. Him a, give me a psychology role. Yep, as soon as Herbert West, I mean, I almost wanted to just whip that blanket off as soon as the name was mentioned. But here's that psychology check. Um, you can all roll it, not just, not just him. Anybody that wants to can roll. Okay. And here it comes. There we go. A failure. No, this is where I'm supposed to be. A poor, ranking. Poor guy. About, you about... you sneezed in the middle of looking at him. Is what yeah. happens. And Franklin, you definitely don't have a clue. You're facing the wall, and you're like, "Oh, wait, he's behind me." Um, Freddie looks like he did well, though. Wexler did well, and Freddie, you're used to reading people as a journalist. You see the color drain out of his face, and he says, "Who told you that name?" Um, it just rang a bell. I, I, I lived here all my life. I was born here. I went to school here. So what... Fair enough. What on earth does Herbert West have to do with this? He's been gone for years. Um, we may have a copycat on our hands. I'm afraid you'll have to explain yourself. He sits well, down. He sits, he sits well, down. If, you would, if you would unveil the the specimen, yep, it sounds like a good time to whip the blanket off and slap the cage down on his desk. Okay, give me a. <laughs> so, oh, I thought you took the squirrel out and just carried the squirrel itself in the cloth. Did you not do that? Uh, yeah, we, had cage. we had to cage with the with the cloth over it. Yeah, oh, leave, it, see. leave okay. it as it is. See, I was going to have you roll a dex roll, and if you failed it, you're going to accidentally fling the squirrel across the room at him. Um, <laughs> that would have been, been funnier, but no. Yeah. Okay. So he he gets up and he walks over and he looks in and he says, "What am I? What am I looking at?" And he, it's moved. It is that is that thing alive? Reanimation, Dean. <laughs> You think... think it might be related to this weird fluid we found at the scene? This is this is uh, we we peruse the dormitory, first floor dormitory of the young Claude Owen, Damn. and this was under his this cage was under his bed. We discovered he just kind of puts his head in his hands and he shakes his head. He goes, "Well, first of all, we need to have this analyzed because we can't assume anything. We know, we have to have facts." There's no way that we can just assume anything and move forward. So the first thing you need to do is get that to, and he says, bear with me, he makes, a, he makes a dot, he dials, and he says, well, where is he? Where is Professor Biggs? Well, can I have his assistant? Gets the assistant, talks to him for a few minutes, says, uh, Professor Biggs, I, I was going to have him take a look at this, but they said he didn't come in today. Um, but his assistant is ready to receive this. I've, I, I, please have, um, please have this analyzed and I'd like a medical report on it as soon as possible. Whatever we do, we have to be very careful here, gentlemen. Herbert West's name is a curse on this campus and I don't, we don't even whisper that name anymore. So when you say the name, if you're trying to connect this with that, 
God help us all, but we've got to we've got to tread very carefully. And he looks directly at you, Dobbs, and he says, "I need your word as a gentleman that you're not going to publish this. The school can't stand another scandal like Herbert West. I need your word as a gentleman that you will keep this." within these walls and not share that with anybody else other than than the four of us. Well, sir, you'd be glad to know that Freddie Dobbs is nothing but a gentleman. <laughs> he says, he looks at you and he says, and he what you see is he looks, he rolls some dice, he looks down at him, he looks back at you and he says, okay. How much money do you need to keep to, to, to keep this story quiet, Mr. Dobbs? Well, just enough to cover what I would have made on a story such as this. I mean, this is a large one. This is a juicy one. You know what I mean? I think a donation can be made by our alumni association, but I need you to I need you to tell me how much. Okay, and I'll just say that we go over the numbers and we come up with something. A hundred thousand dollars. You guys can yeah. negotiate a price if you're happy with it. But he yeah. he's very serious. He's going to pay you to be quiet. Okay. Yeah. And he, he, want, uh, Freddy, and he wants you to Freddy kill the story. Okay. Freddie takes that money. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's just say, let's say it's two hundred and fifty dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, Sounds about like right. Been paid before Thursday, right, fellas? Yeah. He'll. <laughs> He'll arrange. Right. He'll arrange to have the alumni association cut you a check, and he then he's going to have to figure out a way to hide it from. Yeah, how, how can he explain it? He doesn't know. At nice. any rate, Boy, he's so. Boys, it, that, it looks like it looks like we're all going to get paid by Freddie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. And he says, "I got car payments. I mean, I got bills. We'll see." He says, "So please take this. What what you found? Take it to the medical." take it to the medical wing now and then i've asked them to try and get the as many as just get as much information as they can by the end of the day today so please take it over there and let me know as soon as you find out the uh the results <clears throat> and do just to bring you up to speed charlton was in contact with an azanath weight who's also a student here she's with the group of uh Free spirits, the Bohemians, we went and talked to them. They proceeded to point us in the direction of Ms. Waite. We talked to her. She gave us information on this young Claude Owen, and here we are. Mm. So we've we've also been made aware by Ms. Waite that uh, Owen had a problem with young Mr. Charlton. Mm. So mm. we believe... The body of Charlton, the murder of Charlton, mm -hmm. was performed by young Mr. Owen. Okay. In fact, in fact, Dean, Miss Wade is looking forward to taking classes here. I recommend you do not take her on as a student. What she told you, or what you know, is that she's already a student there. She's in philosophy, she's in ah. philosophy classes right now. In, in fact, she's currently a student. I recommend you expel her post haste. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So he says, please hurry up. Don't let anyone see that thing. And Professor Franklin, before we leave, me. do you want to mm -hmm. show the the president what, what we found in Owen's room besides the squirrel? Uh, the, ah. the bottle? Mm -hmm. uh, the the yeah. crumpled piece of paper that you have in your coat pocket there. Oh, yeah. Sure. I'll pull it out. What crumpled piece of paper is that? The one that says, don't call me Indiana Jones? The one that says go to the the university oh. library and look for this stuff. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he looks at it and he says, "Well, this it appears to be a location. This it's in the library. Have you checked this out? What's down there?" No, we're wondering if any of this material might be restricted, and if so, if we could get, say, a letter or note from you saying to allow us access. He says, I believe this section is available to our graduate students. Um, but yeah, if anybody gives you a hard time, he, he sits down, he writes a note, and he basically, basically says, give these gentlemen anything they want. Pre uh, President Wayne Scott, it's got official letterhead. He hands it to 
uh, Dakota Franklin. He says, Dr. Jones, please use that <laughs> however you need to. Dr. Jones. Jones! I cropped the paper. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> and then, uh, then Raisin comes back to me. I'm like, oh, crap. He's like, shall I make you another one? Um, and say hi to Short Round for me. <laughs> All right. The, the paper pin itself torn in half. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So he, you leave his office. You go to the medical school. The um, Langley Biggs's uh, research assistant is there, and takes delivery. And he's fascinated by this squirrel, um, and takes the takes the uh, chemicals. He says, "If you'll give me a few hours, I'll have some information for you." Uh, just you know, check back, check back with me uh, a little bit uh, in maybe two or three hours. So Can what's next? Do? What do you want to do next? I said, let's get to the library. To the library. I don't know why, but I, just, I, I don't know why, but I just feel like there's time pressure, even if even if there isn't. I just feel like there is. I think you're right. If if Claude Owen is on the lam, then uh, mm. the more time we we, wait, we waste, the further away he's going to get. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so you go back to Orn Library. Is everybody going there? Yep. Okay. <laughs> you kind of run in a cluster up to the Orn Library. Go inside. There is a uh, down a staircase going down into the basement, and the librarian says, yep, those files are going to be down there. It's aisle nine. She goes, I can even show you. She walks down. She says, these are these are old papers from students. You know, any, any, all of their dissertations are down here. Um, it's just we keep everything that, that we ask our students to, to deliver, and it looks like this one is, you know, go down to aisle nine here, and, you know, it's it's down there. It'll be down there on the left, so, and she leaves you two years. It's not very bright down there. It's sort of a couple of bare bulbs that are, you know, lit up down there, but it's mostly dark, and you seem to be kind of on your own down there. It's kind of echoey. Um, you get little dust is in the air. And, uh, yeah. So what do you want to do? What do we have there, Professor? Is there a, a few um, references that maybe we could all tackle one or two? Oh, what, so you, what do we have there? So on you the, walk down there? Sheet okay. Paper? Yeah, you walk down the aisle. You turn up the, the one she indicated. There's a you can Your feet sort of echo off in the distance. You can hear that. Um, you walk down about three-quarters of the aisle, and you're just kind of looking. Nothing looks out of out of the ordinary. Um, and you are looking, and the papers are older and older, and there's boxes that the papers are stored in. And you come to a section where it looks like several boxes have recently, like, been pulled out, maybe opened, maybe, you know, somebody's gone through them. It's kind of what it looks like. You see four or five, six boxes, seven boxes, that are like that, and they're sort of stacked near each other, um, and it's towards the back of that aisle. You know, the, it's more shadowy. The lights are, you know, fairly far behind you, so it's not very. Unless you maybe brought a flashlight or something, it's probably, you know, going to take you a while to go through some of these things. Now there are some tables that you could set these things up on. I mean, whatever you choose that that you can open and sort of go through it. You don't have to do it in the aisle, but you know, that's like I say, it's. Uh, at this particular time, it doesn't sound like there's any other students down there but you guys. So with the list we have, how how long do we figure it's going to take to go through all of this stuff? Well, so you want to take all the boxes. I mean, tell you what, you can take the boxes and go to a table, or what are you doing? Yep. Yeah, it'll take one library use roll, right? <laughs> it'll probably take a few. Um, <laughs> so... Is that, is that what you guys are going to do? You're just going to grab boxes and walk them back to a table and start going through them, or or any or what I, else? I guess, unless I mean, what do you guys think? Uh, yeah, we can send one of us for coffee and uh, stake out a table of our own and just get to work. Do yep. do the math, as it were, right? I'm yep. just thinking ahead. If this takes longer than say three hours, um, 
Who's going to go back to the medical building and get that information from uh, uh, what's his name? Biggs is. Uh, but I think the Biggs least academic. Student. I yeah. think the least academic of it should do it. It's for his. Well, uh, yeah. Look everybody at looks at Don. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> his research <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> they all turn and stare at you. I think, at the, the, I think the least the least educated of us. Yeah. We'll turn and look at Donald Fred, at the Freddy? same time. I will take that as a compliment, fellas. <laughs> and uh, we take our coffee black when you're on your way back there. Okay, so it's going to be it's going to be a few hours before there's any possibility that there is um, that there's any information. So here's what we'll do: um, I, every somebody can make a library use roll, um, and. Since since you guys are all kind of working together on this, I'll let you roll with um, one person can roll, and they can roll with advantage. Um, if somebody else, if if well, somebody, how what's the roll? I forget how to I forget how to do it. So let's say let's do it this way because I don't want to look up the rule. Um, whoever's going to be the one that rolls, the first person that wants to assist can first roll, and if they're successful, then the one that's rolling gets a bonus die. Okay, I'm at sixty percent. What are other people at? I'm seventy-five. I'm, you're a, you're a man. I'm sixty as well. So if if we want to give, uh, do you want to give uh, Franklin a hand? They'll be. Okay. All right. So so this uh, is going to be the first. You roll one time per hour. So the first hour. Okay, so you make make a normal roll then to see if I assist. Is how I yeah, heard you? just assist Say roll. It? Yeah, I may be wrong about the rule, but I don't care. Twenty nine. Nice. All right, so that nine. means that Dakota, you will roll with uh, a bonus die. What's that mean? It's a low, it's library use. Basically, when you roll a bonus die, is you roll when you roll percentage die, the tens die. You roll two of those, and you will take the lowest of those two. You see, where it says so bon you see where it says bonus penalty on the screen there? So go ahead and make make your library use roll. Yeah. Okay, you already made it a success, but click where it says bonus penalty. Oh, yeah. There you go. So you got a bonus. Um, so it's 36 over 75, which is... Yeah, okay, that's better. So you guys start opening the boxes. There's all kind of dust in the air. You're starting to flip through these old papers and stuff. The first thing that you notice is these indeed are Herbert West's papers from when he was in school. Um, oh. And as you look, the first thing that comes up um, is, uh, Dr. Franklin, you see papers concerning West's work on the science of reanimating uh, dead bodies. And okay. it, specifically, the wording is the chemical reversal of death. And it looks like somebody has been reading through these, and there's like little notes in the margin that look more fresh um, than it looks like they aren't of the original notes. And somebody's kind of annotated the thing as they've gone through. And that's what you find in the first hour. So you want to do it again? Poppy. It's all poppycock. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Derby says or Delby says. Second hour, you want to do it again? I mean, you just tell me how many times you want to try this. I'll let you keep getting additional information um, each time. So we'll assume right right now it's probably uh, three o'clock. You've done the first hour. It's now three o'clock. Are you guys done? Yeah. You want to keep going? Yeah, I think we can do it again. Anybody want to assist him? Uh, want to, want to do the same thing again with me starting? I'll, sure. I'll do you. I'll do the prep research, so to speak. Yeah. All right. You're, um, extreme there you success. Go. All right. I am setting you up for it. All right. Go ahead and do a pen, do it with a bonus die again. Look at that. I did the highlighting for you and everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and hit bonus. Oh. So that's oh, 89 nice. and 89. 89, yeah. So you've got this the second hour you you don't find anything that's any more useful. Now it's four o'clock. Um Dobbs, you're gonna you you are back at the did you wait two hours and then go back or how how long are you gonna wait before you go back? Yeah, I wait two hours okay. and I'd probably go back. 
So four o'clock comes and you go into the research assistant and he's he's writing some things and he's got this puzzled look and he says, uh, he looks up, where's everybody else? Did they just send you? Oh, you brought yeah. me coffee. Fantastic. And he takes one of the coffees that you have. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, okay. Well, you know, they are the learned type. So we uh, they left them at the library. So uh -huh. what did you find? Well, we're going to need more tests, obviously. But the, your, your squirrel died just recently. It quit moving just recently. So I've got some tests are probably going to take overnight to see any chemicals that were in its body but i can tell you that this this uh container of liquid that you brought um that's chloroform i don't know what what use you would have for it or whatever but um yeah that's chloroform and this yeah looks half empty it looks like it's been used okay well Thank you for your help. Is there anything else you could tell me about this? I mean, this is weird. This is a weird situation. Don't you agree? Well, the squirrel shouldn't have been alive. That's for sure. What's your uh, what? What's your theory? My theory is that it was alive for some reason that I can't explain, and it's not anymore. So I'm. We're doing some tests on. We're basically doing an autopsy on it to see what exactly is in its system or was in its system, and if we find anything odd, we'll let you know. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll give you my card, Here's, and I flip out a card and give it to him. If you find anything, yeah, you let me know. Okay. So, um, at, a, at a game, just real quick, is there any other question that I might have forgot? Yeah, you guys can answer that question. Is there a reason why it died? He says he accidentally stepped on it. That's not true. <laughs> it just it just stopped living. It just quit. It, it's no longer animated. Uh, okay. It's yeah, hard well, to stop. Yeah. Thank you for your help, and uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. Okay. And uh, he's, he as you leave, he says, "By the way, thank you." We don't often get things as interesting as this to work on. It's usually pretty straightforward. So been an interesting day thank you yeah you well uh, you know you're not the only one <laughs> well we'll get back to it though we'll let you know if we find anything okay all right good so the second hour passes you guys don't really learn anything new it's just you know it's clearly you're just kind of organizing the notes and stuff like that so if you want to do another one it'll be the five o'clock roll and i'll come back and relay all the information yep, I yep. he comes back and tells you all this stuff while you're kind of going through this so if anyone wants to assist and make the roll for the five o'clock roll Coming up. Uh, uh, I no. was spending five points on luck. Okay, that's fine. So you've got... Because if anything, I want to assist. A bonus die again then, Dr. Franklin. Okay, much better. All right, so this hour you do manage to sift some stuff out. Um you begin to see some notes, and you begin to sort of co correlate these notes, and you begin to see in the in the highlights, and it's clear that um, Claude Owen, the kind of scribblings in this in the margins, you get the it's definitely intent. You can definitely tell that it's Claude Owen that's making these notes, and you can also tell that he believes he can pick up where Herbert West's notes ended, and he believes where Herbert West failed, that he will be successful. And he's the work he's doing is about trying to um, eff effectively, you know, perfect whatever Herbert West was attempting. And that's your five o'clock roll. That's roughly whenever uh, Dobbs comes back and gives you all this information that you collect all this. So you want to keep going? Does it say anything in there, Professor Franklin, on? Did did West did he go anywhere maybe off campus to perform his work? Did he do his work on Labrador. campus? Yeah. Is there any mention that you, something specific we can look for? Yeah, you can try it. So you wanna do the assist in the role again? This will be the six o'clock um, the six o'clock hour. Absolutely. Let's burn some midnight oil. Okay, um, and here we, uh, oh, 
Oh, okay, take it out of edit. There we go. And here we go. Yeah. Whoops. All right. Okay, Herbert. Or not Herbert. <laughs> that would be bad if you were Herbert West. <laughs> Dakota. What is that, really? <laughs> Very good. Yeah, you, you. as you look through and you're kind of targeting that and thinking about that, there is reference to a farmhouse that Herbert, looks like Herbert was in his dorm, found felt it too okay. confining, and he moved into a farmhouse that's north of town. And you do find a clipping, a newspaper clipping in there that says that that particular farmhouse burned down. Um, okay. By the way, I, I should tell your listeners, or our listeners, I have a book I won at the HP Lovecraft Film Festival called Kanye West Reanimator. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, this is not this is not quite as over the top as that, but. Um, it also mentions that Owen, it, it looks like in Owen's handwriting that there's like some address and some directions that are on there as well. Like he wanted to know and maybe wanted to go look, check over the location. All right, so that's six o'clock. Anything else? I think that's our spot, gentlemen. Do you want to continue to look into the, maybe there's more that we can find out? I would really like to locate this young man, but I got to admit, I'm coming up dry. What do you think? We could check out this old burned down farmhouse. Maybe mm -hmm. he wouldn't. Do you, do you think that he, it sounds like he did experiments in his room and not the farmhouse or, well, I don't know. Maybe he did the, maybe he did the experiments at the farmhouse, but then brought the results back to his room. What do you think? Well, it said West yeah, took his experimenting to this farmhouse, which had since burned down. But if you look here, and I pointed, mm. what oh. Professor Franklin found is that Owen wrote here in the, on the side of the page that he was interested in checking out this site. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like it. I like it. We should do it. Anything to get me out of this library. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. You are a man of action. <laughs> well played. Okay. So that's what you guys want to go do. So let's say it's getting on to about 7 o'clock now. Um, Springtime. So sun is just kind of beginning to drop on into the horizon. You know, it's probably at this point, we're probably looking at it as maybe 7.30 sunset. Sure. Yeah. Place I might be able to pick up a gun. Um, if you lifted it out of Wexler's pocket, you might well, be able to pick one is, up there. This is a, this is this is America. Can't you just throw a rock and get a gun? <laughs> That's true. In that particular, I don't know what the rules were back in the 1920s. I know that in England at this time, <laughs> you could carry a shotgun anytime you wanted to. But at this point, it would probably be difficult to go into a store in this time at this time of night and buy a gun. But, um. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I mean Wexler's got one, and you can always take it off of him if you need to. I still have a canteen full of gasoline. If we have to re burn down this house, you know. I, th I, mean, I thought that's know. the I thought that's the thing you were accidentally sipping on all day. <laughs> <laughs> the alcohol today is extra strong, guys. It's it's got a little <laughs> kerosene in it. It's nice. <laughs> really gets me going. That's right. All right, what's what you, next? What do you say, Freddy? You up for a drive? Let's go. And I say then we, we continue to go. Yeah, I say, <laughs> I say we make our way to this, this farm. Okay. Uh, let's look at this. Absolutely, let's do it. I'm wide awake for some reason, and even jittery. Because let's you've been it. drinking <laughs> gasoline out of his canteen. Um, <laughs> all right, so with the directions... Oh, let's go to a different map. Why not? That's what maps are here for, right? Let's go to, oops, let's go back here. Let's go to outskirts. Let's go to, where do we want Are we going to go? brandish lumber like last time? As Use it as a weapon? Did you say Lumberg? Lumber. Oh, okay. I thought you were <laughs> Freddy, yeah, he used a I think board. I still got it in my truck. I mean, I, I think. <laughs> That's true. That's a very good point. Okay, hang on a second. Let's go to... I don't actually know that this is even still on here. Probably not. 
Actually, it may be here. Yep, there it is. Okay. So, you guys are... I, I guess if born and raised, if this, if this uh, address that was jotted down makes any sense to me, uh, if, if I know where it is and I try to get Freddy to take like, the shortest path yep. as quick so, as possible. So what you got, you're here, uh, you know, roughly right there. Are you guys looking at the map that I'm looking at? Yes. Yeah, so it says you'd have to go out north on North Garrison, up, across, until you hit, um, what is this road called? It says to Bolton, I'm guessing, whatever it is. You kind of take the left on the road to Bolton, and the farmhouse is supposed to be roughly right in this area here. And you are, if from being from this area, you also know there's a, there's a lot of woods behind the farmhouse. The only other thing that's near it is right over here, which is a very large graveyard. This oh, is wonderful. A, this might be a question, but how do you get rid of these? Uh, pictures of people here on the the screen. You got pictures of people on the screen? Uh, like, uh, oh, in the bottom? Like all of you guys down there? Yeah. I okay. Got, I should, like I, in, yeah, yeah, I can tell you how to do it. Go, go into the upper right-hand corner where you see a gear icon. Yeah. Click down there and go all the way down where it says audio and video. Okay. Go to the tab that says video display. And you're uh, going to see... In that you're going to see player video slash avatar size. And you're going to want to select names only. Okay, there we go. Yep, it does give you a lot more screen space, doesn't it? There it is. Now I can see better. Thank you. You can see the map. Okay, so you guys are in town. The place is called the Chapman Farmhouse. It's supposed to be right in this general area. Graveyard in this rough area right here. And it's, as you get in the, uh, if you're going directly out there, as you get in the car, the sun, <clears throat> the sun is just going down on the horizon, so it's getting a little darker. The street lights are beginning to come on. Of course they are. It's not my choice that you guys choose <laughs> to do this crap at night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you doing anything else besides going there? And are, And what are you taking with you? I mean, walk me through some of that. I think you know what I'm taking with me, and it's in a baggie. <laughs> okay. it's, it's it's one of those. It'll that'll solve this situation too, just like mm -hmm. everything else. Okay. I think mm -hmm. for sure, yeah. just like when we went out to the tower, it's uh, of course I'm bringing my dad's gun with me, but like flashlight, I would I would assume we'd bring at least a flashlight. Okay. So let me do. Let me show you this. This is another view of this. It's an older one. It's from the older book. But this is something that is probably safe to show you guys. Zoom in on it and you'll see it. You see the road oh. you see the road going north and then you kind of take that first branch to the left and you see where it says Chapman Farmhouse. Okay. You guys see that? Yeah. Okay. If you look on the other side, like go directly south through those trees, immediately south of the trees is where the graveyard is. Beyond the farmhouse is the town dump. And that's Billington Woods to the left. You see all the way to the left side? That's where the tower had been. Okay. Yep. Okay. You're welcome to look at that way if you want to. All right. So you guys are going to pile in what to, to Freddie Dobbs' car and you guys are just going to kind of make your way up there or what? Yeah, and I'm going to bring um, my canteen full of gasoline, mm -hmm. and um, I will, whenever we get there, I'll pull out my my stick from the woods that I <laughs> my wood My wood stick, okay. <laughs> and I'm going to bring it with me. That's my, my inventory. Okay, I like it. So Do you have a crowbar in your trunk? Oh, and a lighter. Okay. Yeah, Brian asked if you had a crowbar in your trunk. So, yeah, you'll have a tire iron. Everybody would have a tire iron in their car. Yeah, you can have that. All right. So you guys make your way out. Uh, it's a fairly cloudy night, no moon, getting dark. Um, as you get to the edge of town, you turn – or outside of town, you go up North Garrison, you turn left. It's more of a country road. There are – some farms along the way. They don't look like they're really occupied. They're mostly some overgrown areas, um, some dilapidated barns, 
and that sort of thing. And just as the sun is, you know, the sun's completely down now and it's pretty much getting on beyond twilight. And you see what looks like the turnoff to Chapman Farm on the left. Right here, Dobbs, take a left. Yeah, bear with me one second right. here. And as you kind of drive down to the, uh, the left, you see this sort of outline and you see this. You guys see that? Yeah. You guys always take me to the creepiest places, I swear. <laughs> and there's enough wind in the trees, and it's kind of whistling through the, the slats in the barn that are torn apart, and it kind of does kind of make this sort of eerie sort of whistling noise. And there is a burn, there's a farmhouse that's next to it, but it's really only the the um, the, fo the foundation area. The rest of it's mostly gone. There's a chimney that's rising, you're sort of standing alone, but the rest of the farmhouse is burned out and gone. So what do you want to do? You're sitting in your car, car's running. You're just kind of sitting there with the, the headlights looking at it. What do you want to do? Well, who's going in? Maybe we should walk up. Maybe... Um... Maybe you want to leave it running, Dobbs, just in case. All right. We need to get out of here quick. Okay. The, li the lights might be useful, too, shining on that barn. Okay, yeah, so I do that. I, I point the lights, and I put the car in a place where we could easily kind of get out. Okay. So everybody's going to get out. You're going to leave the, the lights on. You're going to leave the car running, but everybody's getting out. Yeah. Well, that right? okay. maybe we should have somebody behind the wheel in case they need to drive up in a hurry to get us, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. That's me. Hey. There you go. <laughs> That's old Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. We're going to turn around and see taillights leaving. <laughs> I like it. We Going to get help, guys. Going to get Wex help. Wexler, Wexler, take, take this canteen. Gasoline. There's gasoline in it. His lighter. Cas take that. Ca canteen of gasoline. I like it. The, okay. the plan B, you know, you know what I mean. Maybe, uh, maybe Thaddeus, if you want to take that, I don't. I got my hands full already with this flashlight and this gun. Okay. Uh, yep, you got it. I can hold on to that. So give me a spot hidden. Whoever gets out of the car, or as you get out of the car, spot um, hidden. Yeah, give me right. a spot hidden. Uh, uh, I trip and regular, fall. <laughs> regular, regular success. Okay. And I see an extreme success from Dakota. Okay, so Dakota, you got the extreme success. Um, the thing that, Delby, that you notice is there are tire tracks that are going beyond where the car stops. And Dakota, you notice looking up at the sort of reflection against the light of some sort of metallic something on the other on the far side of the barn okay heads up i see something metallic back there <laughs> on the far side of the barn i stand up and brush myself off after falling yep, out of the car there was this huge noise and dirt flew everywhere but yeah wexler's okay it was soft Dang, mud. Wexler, that was a hot fall you all right yeah i'm good <laughs> i'm good <laughs> Yeah. You're not oh, gonna yeah. go. You're not gonna take off on us, are you, Dobbs? With your two hundred fifty dollars that you're. About I'm, to waiting. Get? I'm waiting. You're rich. <laughs> so I understand. Was somebody out here? Did somebody anticipate us getting out here? Well, what happened? What did I miss? Well, you don't know. You just saw tracks, uh, car tracks, and you saw. Um... Did, did they look fresh? Yeah. They look fresh. Okay. Okay. I think this is where we're going to find our guy, Claude. Yeah, the plot thickens. What's this metallic thing? Let's go investigate. So as you walk up, you look, and there is, as you kind of walk around the edge of it, you see it looks like you see, kind of see this canvas on top of it. And as you walk up, it's like, yep, there's, there's a Model T that has been driven around the back of the barn and hidden into the trees and it's like trying to you know it, it's obviously somebody tried to you know, drive it around where it wasn't really obvious and the tire tracks lead mm -hmm. kind of up to the up to that car hey hey let's take the spark plugs 
At this point, when you open the engine, all you see is ducks and a conveyor belt. That's the only kind of engine <laughs> that you guys had back then. <laughs> oh, no. The Dragon Bane character's in there. I that's forgot his exactly name. exactly right. <laughs> Daphalomu is in there eating corn. Yeah, that's it. I knew we'd, I knew we'd <clears> get him around to bringing him in tonight. <laughs> there you go. That's exactly right. All right. All right. So, yeah, again, quiet wind whistling through the trees. You hear this sort of creaking of the of the trees kind of rocking back and forth. You hear the branches kind of rustle. No animals, like no birds chirping, no insects. It's very just this generally ominous <coughs> oppressive sense. And then you got the barn. To take a peek at the barn first. There is a door open. I mean, there's an opening that you could have seen. Did you guys want me to show it to you again? Uh, I think I get an idea of what it looks like. Okay. Um, yeah, I suppose um, I'll, I'll peer inside. I mean, can we see with uh, the headlights illuminating the area? Can we look inside? Can we see anything inside? A little bit. It kind of is not properly positioned it's not pointing directly into the door but there's enough light that you can see that immediately you know when you go in there's just like this sort of wooden floor wooden floor there's nothing in there um there's a box that's like broken open there's nothing in the box but it's an old box that's broken open that's there the, the remains of it and then there's a set of stone stairs that are going down okay i'm going to Pull the hammer back on a sing on my single action. Okay. And raise the gun, and you can tell I never fired this gun before. Okay. <laughs> just shaking, and then uh, with my other hand, I'll raise my flashlight and turn it on, and I'll point the beam of light at the stairs and say, "There's okay. stairs going down here." So what you see at the Ooh. bottom is two skeletons with swords coming up. Roll initiative. <laughs> no, nice. I'm kidding. Wrong game system. All right, I'll I'll get in the Scooby Doo position behind you and go down those stairs. Okay. What about the other two other two guys? Yeah, I'm I'm falling right behind them. Okay. Same thing with Freddy. Freddy's in the car. You're gonna stay in the car. Yeah. I'm going okay. to change I'll, your name. Since I'm, since I'm behind, I'll I'll let them know that we're going down with hand signals. Okay. Very good. So the other three disappear. And you guys go down the stairs. Um, I'm going to try to be... I'm not at all. I'm an egghead, but I'm going to try to be sneaky about it. Okay, give me a... Give me a um, what is it? Sneaking? Is that what it is? I'm going to spend 15 luck to be able to okay. be sneaky. He's trying to be very, very quiet. What about the other two guys? Yep. Um, Stealth, not well, sneaky. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely try to sneak as well. Um, we'll see how that goes. All right. Stealth. Look at that! Oh, yeah. Look at both of you guys. You you remember yeah. to take off your shoes and tiptoe. <laughs> Very good. So you get and to the I bottom. Give, uh, yeah. I I give Thaddeus a hard high five at our sneakiness and give her position away. <laughs> and the clapping noise, everybody <laughs> hears it. And wait, what's that? Wait, did you smell something? Listen. Oh, that was it. Listen. Did you smell something? That's what it was. Um, you get to the bottom or towards the bottom of the stairs, and it's this sort of you know how cold cellars can be in sort of this sort of, you almost you pass into this sort of area where it's very, very cold air. And you get to the bottom and it's very dark, a little bit humid. Um, and give me, well, you get your flashlights on, right? Um, or did you turn them off? No, I I want to see where we're going. So okay. I've got <laughs> Yep. So on the right hand, it kind of opens up to the right. And you see a dirt floor, and on the right-hand side, kind of on the close wall, just immediately to your right, you see what looks like four um, sort of mounds of dirt that are rectangular shaped. And then there's a fifth one that there's a bunch of dirt piled to the side, but there's a, a big trench that's dug. And it occurs Great. to you that these look like freshly dug graves. Can we I'm hear gonna, anything? Yeah, I'm going to listen to see if I hear anything. Um, okay, give me a listen roll. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't hear anything. All right. Hold on. There we go. N nope. Oh. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, I'm definitely not a listener. More a talker. <laughs> a psychiatrist that's not a listener. That's terrible. Uh, that's a fact. 89. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> tell, me about, tell me about your mother, Graves. And I'm going to talk the whole time you do. Yeah, you guys don't hear anything, but go ahead and give me a spot hidden. Spot. Hidden. Actually, I think I probably wouldn't hear anything because the blood is pounding in my ears right now. Yeah, I'm right. very, Definitely. very nervous. 50, That's true. Fifty-five success. Okay. Yep, the other two on the far side of the the area, the the dirt floor, you see like this faint glow along the ground, and you realize that there's a door there. And the door is closed, and a light is coming from underneath the door. How quietly can we open that door? So I motion towards the door so everybody can see. Yep. So, Freddie, you just have, can we assume that you're going to stay here the, throughout, or are you going to get bored and come in, or what? Well, um, I, my job was to stay at the car, so I'm going to do what he told me to do and stay with the car. Okay. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the Freddy we know. <laughs> yeah, at some point, are you going to say, zoinks? Uh, all right. So, okay. So, you guys are standing I'm on the too, stairs. I'm, I'm too scared out here on my own. <laughs> very, very cold, almost creating a mist on the, on the, you know, the ground, up about a foot above the ground. And as you're as you're looking and you can see that little strip of light, you think you might hear movement on the other side of the door. Very very sort of furtive, but you can sort of hear it a little bit. So what do you think? Should we try to open the door as quiet as we can, and then you can poke that pistol through? Yeah, somebody open the door for me. And Definitely. I'll... So I'll try opening the door as silently okay. as I can. So the door opens the other way. It opens in. You don't pull out. It kind of opens in. So you're just going to walk up and <clears throat> what? Open it and push it in. Yeah, but you as know, quietly not as slamming you can. it in, but as quietly. As I you get. Can, yeah. Give me another sneak roll, another stealth roll, as you're trying to do that. Okay. Absolutely. Um... Look at nice, that! Jim. I'm kicking my butt. Um, you you reach out and you try the knob. Now as you're standing there. You guys can now hear what sounds like an an engine running behind the door. And nice. You, as you try the knob, you notice that it's locked. Ah. Okay. Um, well, at least he didn't hear us, you know, like trying to open it. I guess that's what the stealth roll was about. Yep. So I'll motion to you and silently say with my mouth, looks like it's locked. As opposed to saying it with his elbows is what he's trying to tell you. Exactly. You, yeah. the lock. you got that 1% uh, chance, man. <laughs> we do. Well, why not? You rolled 100% last time. You might roll a yeah, 1% right? this time, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're equally as likely. Uh, alternatively, we could set the door on fire, yeah. or we could break it down Kool-Aid style. What do you think? What should we do? Yeah. I'm looking at you like, what do you want to do? Because I'm, to... I'm a tired old man. Now, I could sniff a bunch of cocaine and break it down, but I don't think that's going to work. He looks at you and says, I'm always angry, and suddenly he hits the door. There you I go. look over the lock to see if it, if I could possibly pick it, and I can't. Yeah, so I mean, I it's, look, like, it's like a I little skeleton up. key kind of thing, yeah. Let's just break it. Let's just break it in. I think between the three of us, if we put our shoulders into the store, we could open it. Okay. Yeah, All right, and I will say I will say that Freddie Freddie does come down. Freddie is scared about being in the car by himself and come wa comes wandering down the stairs. I guess is there stairs? Yep, stone stairs. There. Yeah. So are you going to try and be stealthy? You don't see anybody down there at the bottom of he the stairs. Know, he doesn't know anything's wrong, honestly. Right. So he's just going to wander down. He's just going to wander down. He doesn't see anything. You know. Okay. So yeah. as you guys are at the door, kind of trying to decide what to do, you hear footsteps on the stairs. You know, it's okay. We knew Freddie wasn't going to listen to us anyway. <laughs> His nose is twitching. He smells a story, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't leave it alone. So you guys going to do anything about that? Yeah, the... I turn around and shine my flashlight at the... Okay. Yep. Freddie holds his hands up. Yep. 
<laughs> hey, hey, fellas, hey, uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't stay out there by myself. Okay, I, I just. And as you're saying that, you look and you see the four sort of mounds of dirt, and you see the one that's open with dirt laying to the side, and you're like, these are freshly dug graves. Ooh, we're trying to get through this door. Well, yeah, about but to, like, about to break it down. Be careful. I mean, they got these bodies everywhere. I mean, come on. What's that? Be careful. Did you say we heard an engine running on the other yeah, side of the just door? Kind of, just kind of a thrumming. Is it loud? Uh, Not from where you are. They could hear it on the other side of the room while they're next to the, the door. How much of that chloroform do we still have? None of it. Oh. You gave it to them to analyze. I wonder if, uh, with this noise, this thrumming, give us... The chance we need to maybe it'll uh, distract whatever's on the other side of the store from us breaking in the door. I'm trying to weigh that in my mind. If it's loud enough, like if we if we bash the store open, maybe we have a chance to get the jump on whatever or whoever is behind the store. Mm -hmm. I say we put our shoulders into it and see if we can't get through the store. Okay, so... Whoever wants to do that, make a stealth roll. Now, here's the deal. The stealth roll, depending on the strength of the door, you'll have to make either like a, like a, a regular success if the door has a strength of less than 50. Um, well, it, it's 50 above you, I think is what it is. Um, but if you have somebody helping you, you can add your two strengths together, which would reduce, like let's say the door has a strength of 100. Um, it'll re And so that means you would have to have an extreme success to get through it. Um if you take the person, let's say Dobbs says, "Okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to hit the hit the door same time as you," then Dobbs hits the thing. Whatever his strength is, let's say you know, 15 or whatever, you can reduce. Or I know it's more than that, but it becomes an 85 instead. But in every additional person, and you have to start with the person with the lowest strength for, or the highest strength first, and then the person with the yeah. lowest strength can roll. Is maybe it's the other too way bad around. we don't. Too bad we don't have a screwdriver. We can take the hinges off. <laughs> uh, that's true. But that's fine. Who's our, who's it, our tough guy? It doesn't I'm look like the strongest it. door. I'll be. Let's just be honest here. Man, it's a cellar door in a crappy cabin. But uh, I don't have I'm, a screwdriver. I have exactly I'm a weakling, so who's who's our toughest? toughest I got for like forty. <laughs> Forty-eight here. That's me. Fifty-five. Okay. Very tough guy. Let's master that wall. Who's the weakest then? I have a strength of 40. I'm pretty weak. That's fine. I mean, it doesn't mean the person that's weakest has to do it. I mean, if he's not attacking, the, if he's not hitting the door, you don't have to make a roll. Whoever's third, 37 strength. So I'm I'll, I'll help you, Franklin. Let's go. Man, okay. we are eggheads, aren't we? So <laughs> I'll just tell you guys, if you have somebody that's got a really high strength, it's probably better just to let them hit the door than the person trying to get, because this is not a strong door. All right. I'll come at it then. Okay. Give it a good kick. Uh, give me a strength roll. Oh, nope. You want to uh, use any of your luck for that? Let me see how much luck I've got. Can you push the roll? Yeah, I was going to push it if and if not. Yeah, I, I could try pushing it. That's what I was going to ask. Do you want to push the thing? If you're unsuccessful, then probably you're going to take damage. Okay. Did I just re-roll? Yeah. Or and you can't use you can't use luck because you did that. So let's give you. Maybe we should just light the whole cabin fire. <laughs> I don't know why it's going. Okay, you take three points of damage as your knee just all of a sudden it's just like crunches in your shin. Just you get this incredible pain in there, but. The door does, the lock just kind of break free and the door kind of vibrates and shakes open. And the noise of the engine gets louder. And I have to do one thing really quick here. It's here. Okay, good. All right, so, oops, wrong. That's not how you do it. There we go. And when you get through the door, uh, that's not what I want. Okay, I'll show you this that dead gummit scott 
hold on. This is what I want to show you guys. You look, and through the door, you see a room. There's a big engine running. There's lights in the room. You see a face. You see this guy right here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, you see this guy. He's got scalpel. He's got all kinds of instruments laid out on this table. He's got, um, you know, he's obviously doing some kind of a work. And on the table, there's a human body. Everybody give me, um, uh, what? Maybe spot hidden. Something like that. Yeah, spot hidden is good as anything. Ready. Freddy, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. I'll take I'll take my regular success. No, a hard success. But it ain't no critical with a one. <laughs> so it's just the th three of you guys. Anybody else going to roll? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh... Okay. So oh. you're, you're kind of focused on this guy looking, and he looks up, and he goes, Stop! Stop! Stop interrupting me. I'm almost there. You have to give me a few more minutes. I've I've almost figured it out. Fine. Just you found me, okay? I'll go quietly, but you have to let me let let me finish. The two of you guys, Dobbs and Delby, you look on the table and you see this. I don't know why it's taking so long for me tonight. You see that. And that's Langley Biggs. And he is in the process of being dissected. And he turns his head. And he opens his mouth. And he just has this sort of low moan. His eyes don't look like they're intelligent. Um, he's very pallid. He doesn't have mm -hmm. any... Uh, these, you don't see any blood anywhere. And... Um, you see he's he's tied well he's not tied down he's he's sort of splayed out on this table and this guy who's obviously Claude Owen appears to be um working on him and he's like look I'll I I I I'll go quietly you just have to let me finish first okay I'll confess I did it Frank wouldn't leave me alone and I tested and I can make things come back to life look he's not dead anymore he's not this professor biggs will appreciate this he's he's okay i had to i had to kill him to show that i could bring him back but look look he's not dead anymore just leave him leave me alone let let me finish my work and put the scalpel down Let's, Young Owen, it, let's it, do this. Yep. Sand checks, teacher? <laughs> yeah, we're not yeah, we're gonna do a few okay. things here. Yep. I hate to be that guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, let me do this first. I'm sorry this is going slowly, but let me just do this. All four of you guys are now on the board. Can you see yourselves? Yes. Okay. And let me move these guys. And when you say on the board, how do you mean? I, you, do, you, do you see your tokens? Oh yeah, no. yeah, I see it. Okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Over right hand side. Oh, yeah, yeah, see him here. I'll show you. Right there. You guys see yourselves? Yeah. All right. So what we need to do is we need to have everybody roll. Instead, there's no rolling initiative. It's just your dexterity. But if you'll open your character sheets, um. You can see, oops. Mm -hmm. is Dexterity is 60. Yep, so let me do this. I'll do, hang on. I we should be there. able to post it to the turn tracker. Yeah, just right? put, it to the, put it in the turn tracker, yeah. So I've got to do this one. And I don't know why this is not doing what I wanted it to do, but it's not. Okay, it's fine. I'm going to do it. I, I can do it separately. So let me open the turn tracker as the pivotal music sort of kicks in go ahead and put everything in the turn tracker now if you guys oh we gotta click our token yeah. i can't click my token you can't I'm click your token i you're, cannot you're not don't have a rights to it okay that's not good okay hang on i don't want to sorry i thought i'd already sorted this part out uh i don't know why this thing is not doing what i want 
Yeah, I can't click my token either. Yeah, give me one second. Let me see. If you this... got. I've got to go over here. And let's start with Delby. I thought that I gave you guys control of these things, but maybe not. No, all players have control of your characters. Uh, let's take him back. I'm going to do him in the turn. I'll put him in the turn tracker for you. I don't know why you can't do the, the token, but I'll do it anyway. I'll do it by myself. Where is where you do that? Oh, I mean, why is your character sheet suddenly not showing up? Okay, that one's It now. doesn't like me. Okay. So can you guys go over to the right-hand side on the journal tab and open your character sheets that way? Because that's mainly what you're going to need to use. Uh, my character sheet's open. Okay, so try and put it, put it on the, the character sheet. Um, put it up there. Put it up. Sorry, where? So, no, so over on the right-hand side, click on, your, on the journal tab. Look at your character right. sheet there. Open open your character sheet from there, and then go into I believe it's in combat tab, and on the left hand side you're going to see dexterity. Oh, turn order, gotcha. And okay. it's just a turn tracker. Should I try to throw the token in there? No, that's not it. Uh, do it. Sorry, what am I trying to what am I trying to throw into the turn order? You should be able to go underneath the in the combat tab. Immediately beneath that, on the far left-hand side, you should see the word dexterity, eight, uh, dexterity, whatever it is, whatever the number is. Underneath the word, it should say turn tracker. Two turn tracker. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure why that's not doing it. Text measure, text, draw. What are you, no, no, you're not, you're not, are you looking at your character sheet? Uh, what about the rest of you guys? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at my character sheet. Are you yeah, seeing? So, I see, so, I, so look I see under. The, I see the turn order. Look under strength. Under that is dexterity. Under that is intelligence. Under that is the word skills. To the right of yes. skills yep. is the word combat. Click on combat. Yes. Underneath that is okay, the word down. dodge. To the left of dodge, it says dexterity. Whatever your number is. Uh, and under that it says turn. two turn tracker. Yes. Uh, yeah. When I click on that, nothing happens. I know. It did it with one of my guys, but it's not doing it with this. I don't know why. Let me see what's going on with this. I'm going to put all players on this, and let's see what happens. Yeah. I know I did it right because I did it on the first guy, and it worked. And I don't know why it's not doing it on these guys, but let me just try it this way and see what's going on. It's rolling it on this tab, I think is what it's doing. Yeah, I keep I keep doing it initiative eighty, initiative eighty, initiative eighty. Can I just I just push it over here? No. Okay, I am gonna go. I don't know why that's not working. It's, I mean it, admittedly this is the beta. It's the, the jump gate beta, so it's possible that it's related related to that. So I'm gonna clear it and try it again. And if it only lets one person on there, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. We'll just have everybody tell us what it is. Sorry, I know this kind of takes you out of the moment, but let me try. That's right. You, you, you can always edit okay, it. The first one, the first one made. No, I won't be editing anything out. But the first one got in there, but it's not. Um, it's not the person that I thought. Anyway, this the turn tracker is not working. Okay, so let me pull this out. Pull this over here. I want to do one other. Just, if you guys can open your character sheets, you can do it. You should be able to do everything in your character sheets. And I'll just call call for initiative. Call top to bottom on dexterity, and you can tell me what you're going to do. Okay, and that should take care of that. Can you guys do that? Are you able to do that much? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So let's start with. He he just said to you, just give me some time. And you said put whatever down, and he looks and he just kind of shoves at uh, Langley's body, and Biggs starts to get up. His front is still open. He's his organs are kind of spilling out, and you guys all need to make a sanity roll. One, two, this is good. It'll be good if all of you fail yes. your sanity rolls and roll above yeah. fives. 
Uh, we nope. can't. We can't put luck towards that. Right? You can't. Sanity. Nope. Can't do it. Complete. Complete success. Oh, okay. I thought. Okay. So hard success for Dakota. They'll be successful. So Freddy, here's yours. There you go. I don't know why it's pausing so long. Two for you, Freddy. Okay. And here comes Wexler's four. Okay. Wexler, you lost four. So both you guys are frozen for a round as you're kind of looking at this, like, what in the world am I seeing here? This is the guy that we were with the other night. He's dissected. He's open. And he's standing up. And he's moving towards us and um you see herbert or you don't see herbert you see claude standing behind him with this fierce grin on his face so now who uh who's tell me everybody's dexterity does anybody have above a 95 a 95 how about a 90 85 80 yeah okay go ahead and tell me what you want to do um, does, is someone holding the gasoline? I would say the can. Well, did you bring it? Did you bring it down? Thaddeus. Thaddeus had it. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So right, I'm gonna call up, burn it down, and then I'm gonna take a swing at the bigs. Just with your fist? With no, with a tire iron. Okay. All right. So let's do. Oh, I got to do one. This is the one. Okay, so go ahead and the way it works in this game, I don't know if you've ever done Well, it's kind of similar to the Delta Green game. They can either choose to um, fight back or dodge. This thing is not going to dodge, but it will fight back. So let me get over to this here. Okay, that's that one. All right, so go ahead and roll to attack and the... Uh, sorry, here. Langley will do the same thing. Where in the world is going on here? Alright, I don't know why that is that way. <clears throat> yeah, just go ahead and roll. Uh, it's going to be Brawl. So go ahead and roll that. Uh, okay, well that's a little better, but I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, you going to roll yours? Here he comes with his. So, dang it. There we go. All right, so you failed yours. Tell me, you can you can use luck for this if you want to. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to burn the 3 points. You have 3 points. Okay. So, for a second it looks like he's going to dodge or you're you're going to not hit him and then you do manage to connect with the tire iron. So the tire iron, do you know what the damage is? I want to say it's, uh, it's it's 1d I believe it's 1d8. A large club is 1d8, yep. so like a baseball bat, a cricket bat, yep, that's what uh, I thought. metal poker. Yeah. Yep, 1d8 plus your damage bonus. So if, if you haven't got it set up on your character sheet, you should be able just to roll and it'll do damage, but it, it doesn't look like that you've got it set up on that. So if you want to just roll 1d8 plus 1d... What's your, uh, what's your damage bonus? Can you tell that from your character sheet? It should have, it should have uh, given it to you automatically. See here, where would I find? And is that in combat? On yeah, yeah. It's in combat. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna have da yeah, have, you'll have damage once there's a fourth one over on combat. Yeah, it looks like I got a zero for. Bonus. Okay, so there's none. So there's just the one d eight then. Is two that's whole points. That's good. Well, this it admittedly is two points at least. All right, so let's take this. Where in the world do you see? Am I on this which page am I on? Okay, this is who I want. Alright, so oh, oh, sorry, I gotta do that. Alright. There. So you whacked him you, you whacked him across the uh the midsection and parts of his intestines kind of roll out onto the floor when you do that and he doesn't seem to much care and he's got this sort of claws and he's just kind of reaching for you um that's gonna be that so he's also let me think no go ahead and give me a um 
everybody can give me a spot hidden just really quick. Um, just take a second on the skills. And... Wexler and Franklin. And every, every, everybody at Dobbs notices there is a large, can a large sort of barrel that is next to to Owen and it's beginning to you can hear it kind of banging around something inside of it's banging around okay so we've we've done 80 what about 75 70 let me see here what is his okay that's good okay so about that time what you see you hear this noise and Owen says I think we need somebody else at the party don't you professors and he kicks the barrel and the barrel falls over to the side and all of a sudden crawling out of the barrel is this uh, let's do this let's do this let's go here <laughs> And there's all of these hands and sort of forearms of different people that are animated and they're beginning then they start crawling rapidly towards you guys. They won't get to you this time, but they're crawling in your direction. And you see, let me see, four, there's four of you, two hands, two hands towards each one of you guys. Um, so that's him. I did 70. What about seven? What about 65? Six, 60. You guys are very slow. 60. 60. Good job. Any buzz? All right. Here, go ahead with 60. Kid, you're expelled. I'm going to throw the entire canteen on him. Okay. So yeah. you go ahead and give me a give me a throw roll then. Aww. Couldn't we just say rule of cool? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's the base throw roll? Because I've got zero percent in throw. You got I don't it's know a, what the it's twenty percent. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a skill for it. Just click on it; it'll give you that. It'll tell you. Uh, no, I'm just going to add twenty percent because uh, I'll, I'll go into edit mode real quick. Because uh, if, if you remember, uh, none of the bases were added when we, when we made the character, so I'll just. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. So yeah. it's, it wouldn't be; it would be zero. Otherwise, that's fine. It right, should, so it should, I mean, that it. should be. That uh, so yeah, the, either way, that's fine. So, so yeah, I'll just add twenty percent. Yeah, so um, it's, it's I can figure out. Put it in edit mode. Sixty-four over the base to twenty. Uh, wow, how can I add the twenty? Per, you know what? I'll I'll, I'll just I'll just roll percent. I'll dice and add twenty. How's yeah, that? But, yeah, but you're rolling. Tr you're rolling track. Right. So uh, I'm screwing it up. So what I'll do is I'll just roll D one hundred now. That's fine. And I rolled an eighty percent. So no, I rolled a fifty-nine percent. Yeah, so we know I failed it. So you, um, you failed by just about forty points. I don't but, have forty points of luck. So how about I know how incredibly important it is, so I push it. You can't push combat rolls. Uh, well, it's not a combat roll. It's a throw roll. Yeah, it's a combat. I guess roll. that is. It is so what, combat. what you guys see is he takes the canteen and he throws it, and it goes straight over. Owen's head and it just kind of hits the back wall and he just kind of goes down the wall onto the floor. Oh. Now this is a stone. Sorry, guys. Th these are stone walls where he is because it's underground. Um, Sorry guys. Sorry guys. I don't know what to say. All right. Is it 65 that, you, that was that was you or 60? That was. That was 60. Okay. So 55 now. You guys are intensely slow. 45. Or uh, 50. Forty-five. Are all? Are you sure? Are you sure you guys are alive? I'm forty-four. Okay. Um, you can't be forty-four. You'd have to be a, some some increment of fifty of fives if you do the if you roll your stats for dexterity. I don't know. I did. That is uh, not acceptable. Commander. You're very confused. That's fine. <laughs> um, forty-four then. Well. Yeah. I say let I, I there's still gas. I say light everything on fire and let's run away. <laughs> so yeah, Dobbs, what do you want to do? You see that you see the uh, Lang, uh, whatever Langley Biggs stepping forward, got a bit of a gashed head, 
and you see all these sort of forearms and hands kind of <laughs> it looks like the Adams family but there's a family of these things rushing towards you and you see Owen looking behind you he's like D- didn't didn't have to end this this way okay it didn't have to end this way all right i'm going to try to throw my lighter at it at what <laughs> At the at the gasoline that's in the back of the room. Okay. Go ahead so, yeah. and do a throw roll. So is it like a Zippo that you that you? Lit? Yeah, it's like a it's like okay. an old gas Zippo ladder. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and make a throw roll. Fail. Thirty four points percent. higher. No, I don't have any luck. Okay. I got. So yeah. what happens is you throw the thing and the lighter goes out. It hits the wall, clatters to the ground, and you hear you see Owen look down. He looks back and he says. You guys are re- really be- bad at this, aren't you? <laughs> All right, forty to, uh, down to forty. Thirty-five. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna spend my turn aiming my gun at what? Owen's head. Okay. So that's being done. Nothing's interrupting you there. Uh. Th- 30. Has everybody gone? Brian, you went? I was 80. I was the first. Ah, okay. So you guys all went. Okay. So that's all the way down. Round one's finished. We'll start off again. I think 80 is the highest, right? So, Brian, you're standing in front of this this Langley Biggs that's not living. He's not living anymore. Tell me uh, what you're going to do. I'm going to try to kick him back. Okay. Uh, I guess it would be a brawl. So you wait. So you walk me through what you want to do. You want to knock him back or what? Kind of knock him, knock him farther away from me. Okay, that's going to be a combat maneuver. What's your build? Uh, what's a build? Go to your combat tab. A build's how big oh. you are. Basically, it's your strength plus your size, and I forget what you divide it by. Right to the left of your damage bonus. Yeah, it's uh, zero. Okay, so there's you just just do a normal roll. He's going to get the fight back, and he'll do a brawl. You can do a brawl, but your the effect will be that you won't do any damage. You'll just knock him back. And he's going to roll as well. Oops. Eh. Sorry, I have to take that there. Hang on. There, no, it will not work. Okay. What do you know? He was successful. Well done. And that means, what is his additional damage? He has no additional damage. So he's going to, he just kind of claws straight across at you when you're trying to do that. And he's clawing at your eyes. And you do one point of damage. And you have this, he, Langley has this really sort of dulled look and his eyes seem very cloudy and um, he says but in but very slurred language he says stole my car so there's some intelligence in there <laughs> and um, I'm going to yell out England sucks <laughs> yeah there you go I like it <laughs> well done alright so at this point you look across the room and you see Claude Owen with a syringe and he's injecting himself with something and then he throws the syringe to the ground and he's got this huge grin on his face um, and that's him these hands all reach you guys at this point and they begin crawling up your body and trying to grab onto you guys so they're all going to be making um, these sort of grab maneuvers let's start with Let's go left to right on this here. I think this is bound to be Freddy Dobbs on the left-hand side. So, Freddy, dodge, fight back. What do you want to do against these these things that are crawling up? By the way, um, I didn't make you do a, a, a sanity roll for the, for the disembodied hand, so you guys make another sanity roll as these things get there and start trying to attach themselves to you. Okay. You are very... Sane. Success. Okay. And Freddie and Franklin are okay. Or Dobbs and Franklin. Okay. 
Oops. There. Dobbs, you, or Dobbs, you meant take four and two for Franklin. And you guys are very shaken, but the, you, you basically you begin to see, feel this pull on your leg, and you look, and this thing is kind of crawling. It's got claws. It's, you know, it's got dirty sort of fingernails, and it's uh, it's, it's sort of on your calf, and it starts just squeezing down, and it's got almost this inhuman strength, and it's grabbing, and it's squeezing, and it's doing a combat maneuver. So do you want to fight back? Do you want to dodge? What do you want to do? There's two of them uh, that are on you. I'm going to try to dodge. Okay. Go ahead and roll. That's actually a good idea. Go ahead and give me, give me a dodge. Okay. I got a regular success. All right. If I can get this thing to move, it will not move. And I'll go back over here then. Let's see what this thing can do. Okay, regular success. So you got a regular success. It did. So you managed to get out of the way of these things. And I'm going to have them both roll collectively. I'm not going to roll eight different rolls. Okay. <coughs> the next pair are coming on whoever the guy immediately to the left is. Who is this guy? Franklin. Is that? It says non-generic character because I haven't associated it with anything. All right, Franklin, I should have, I, you know, going back to roll 20 from Foundry, there's little subtleties that you just forget, and I did forget to, to do that level of it. At any rate, Franklin, same thing with you. The hands are sort of working their way up, and they're grabbing, like, really tightly and squeezing down on your legs as they crawl up, trying to get further up your body. But they're, they're doing, you know, they're doing a fighting maneuver. They're trying to do you damage as they're climbing up your body. So... What do you want to do? Uh, what can I do? You either can fight back or dodge. If you can dodge, that means they didn't get that, you know, they didn't actually get a hold on you this time, but um, you're not going to damage them. If they win, then that means they've got a hand, their hand, they got a hand on you because that's all they are is a hand and they've done no. damage to you. You can fight back and try and like squish these things or whatever, but it's up to you. Fight back or dodge either one. Yeah, I'll fight that. Okay, so just roll your b roll brawl. Nope. And hang on, that's it there. Same thing with me. We both failed. These things couldn't get a purchase on you, and you didn't successfully dodge. But neither one of you guys did anything. <clears throat> Wexler, I think you're the next one over, right? The third with the blue background. Yeah. Okay. No, that's uh Delby. Okay, Delby. Sorry, S cocaine Delby. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yep, I'm going to give you, I, so, did you say dodge? Yeah. I'm going to give you a bonus die because of the jittery jumpiness that cocaine gives you. <laughs> so you're extra fast. Excellent. All right. We're going to go for that. Uh, um, okay. Here's the normal dodge. Uh, oh, you, well, you know what? Extreme. Woo -woo -woo! You're uh, just dancing all there. around. You're almost, yeah. you're almost, the rest of you, he looks like he's doing some sort of like hat dance around the things, you know, like it's some sort of celebration. All right. Well, I'm actually using, I'm actually using the matrix. <laughs> I like it. Wexler, you're the last one. Tell me what you're going to do. Um, well, if I do anything, I won't be able to get the bonus die on the aim. So you're just going to let it and attack. If I, well, and if I take damage, I will lose the You'll bonus lose die on the aim. Yeah. It's up to you. So, um, you'll get a bonus die for point blank range. If you shoot it, Right. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to take a shot at it, I guess. Okay, so from aiming, you move down and you put the bullet, or you put the, and it's kind of on top of your foot, so if you really do badly, you might shoot your own foot, but let's see what happens. Right. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Let's see if, I'll bet, it, I'll bet it won't get better than an extreme success. Well, it's, <laughs> it did, but you got a better roll. So um, you're the one that's attacked. So it's fighting back, and you, in that certain circumstance, you win. So go ahead and do your damage. <coughs> All right, that's a D10 plus two. Seven points. That is seven you, points. You look down, you you shoot it. It's like a tarantula just exploding and fingers go everywhere. And they're kind of twitching all around, but one of them is gone. All right, so the last... Okay, so that's them. That's the last of the 80s. 75. 
70, 65, 60. 60. Okay. However, with no more gasoline in my hands, I'm not really sure what to do. How about I would like to go grab the Zippo? I'd like to go grab it and pick it up if possible. So you're going to run past... Um, you're going to yes. run past Langley, past Claude, and uh, try, oh, and, yeah. grab, try and grab the thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm an alias ninja. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I, I got this. Run past. That's fine. See if you can grab the thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, I figure that the, I figure that, that Zippos are uh, our only chance. Okay. So, uh, it's not, how would I go it's back not, that? It's maybe, not maybe, brawl. Maybe, maybe yeah, I'm trying to think what it would be. I'm going to say it'd be throw again. Even though it's not a great deal, because it's a small thing, it's very chaotic. It's not. There's just a lot going on. So just do another. Can you reach over there, grab the thing, and uh, I mean that's that's. There's not really a good. There's not a grab skill. Is you have? Is there an athletic mm. skill? Is there an athletic skill in this? No. There is not dexterity. An yeah, but dexterity, I mean, raw dexterity. I'm not sure that would. I mean, maybe it is. Um, Okay, do a dexterity roll, but you'll have to do a hard success. Okay, and here we go. Success. Um, let's see uh, how how many points you'll need to have. Points of luck. What is that? Six points? Yeah. No, in order to get a hard success, it needs to be half. So, is your dexterity so, a sixty? Uh, it is a sixty. Okay. Well, you can't so wait, spent... you can't spend luck on combat, and this is all combat. So, you guys only can't spend luck on any of this stuff. So it sounds like I'm 16 points shy. How about pushing? No, nope, you can't push. Can't push rolls. Nope, can't do any of that stuff. Okay, so you're basically reaching down and fumbling, and the Zippo mm -hmm. is kind of scooting around in the, the liquid of the gas, and you're getting it all over your fingers mm -hmm. and your hands as you're trying to grab this thing. Ah, but maybe maybe I could grab it and light it and light myself on fire. Yeah, you could do that. I'm sure that the cocaine would go. not cause you to feel pain. All right, yeah, so... I'd, I'd be, I'd, be okay with that as long as I was successful. I'd yeah. be okay going out in a blaze of glory. So what's your uh yeah. So tell me your um was it sixty five? Um uh that was sixty. Sixty, okay. So down down to fifty yeah, fifty five. Fifty. Okay. Our uh uh our our uh, Langley guy goes, and he's doing the same thing with. I guess he's still attacking. Um, he's still he's still attacking you, Brian. So go ahead and are you fighting back? Or are you dodging? I shouldn't have rolled that yet. That was a mistake. Yeah, I'll fight back. Okay, so now let's both roll. Okay, and he nothing to use. Okay, both of you guys failed. Both of you guys suck. Um, you're just kind of stumbling around, clawing at each other. All right. That would be 50, 45, 40? 44. Okay. I think you're 45, <laughs> but I, be I believe it's 44. Go ahead and do I don't it. know why. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're all, they're all, every, every, every statistic has to be an increment of five because you take your number and you multiply it by five. At any rate, 44, I'll take that. Go ahead and tell me what you're going to do. <laughs> um, I guess I'm also going to try to get that lighter also. I'm going to do the dex check as well. Um, okay. That's fine. Go ahead and do that. You'll have to do a hard I success. Can't, I can't fight. I'm not, there's no, I don't got any skills in that. Okay, so. that's fine. Well, that didn't do much good. 20 points. No. Of, yep. All right, you both are fumbling and bouncing around in the corner trying to get to this lighter. And that would be 40, 35, 30. Oh, I'm going to I'm I'm going to aim again. Okay. So that'll be it's the a single action, so yeah, yeah pull the hammer back and yeah. take aim. So you have to wait until next turn. Okay, that's your action. Yep. Okay, that's fine. So I think that's everybody. So let's start back again at the top. Start start at eight. I think 80 is the highest. So Brian, you can go first. All right. I'll take another swing at him. Yep. Oh. He is gonna. He's going to attack you as well. He's fighting back. Oh, hard success. Okay. So far, it's not an extreme success, at least. So it's going to be one d 
three is all he's going to get to do. I'm going to 45 both of us. It's like a good. slap fight going on. It is very much like a slap fight. You're not really getting a lot. I wonder why it didn't maintain that roll, but whatever. It's fine. And two points of damage. He just kind of claws at your neck again. Begins to bring a little bit of blood out and that sort of a thing. So at 80, so we've got the two hands each on each one of you guys, except for on Wexler, you've got the one. So let's start with Dobbs. What are you going to do with these hands that are trying to crawl up your legs? Um, I'm going to try to smash it with my foot. Okay, so you're fighting back. Okay. Yep. Go ahead and fight back. Um, combat. Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta look this up. You should. You're just gonna hit brawl. I think. There it is. Okay. Failure. So what happens is you you try and get your you try and step on one of them and it scuttles out of the way and the other one just grabs it and just starts squeezing down with this almost inhuman force. Let's see. This thing does not have any. Damage bonus, does it? No, it does not. Okay, so it's. Dead gummit, why in the world? I don't know why it makes it. You see, I could take this thing up. Okay, you just take a point of damage, is all you take. Okay. Alright, so next time, or the next one we have is um, Brian. Uh, Dakota, same thing, fighting back, yep. dodging, whatever. Okay, so let's give that a round. Let's see what happens with that. Oh, that sucks. Both of you guys failed again. You're not very adept at fighting, I can already tell you. Um, well, the we're eggheads. It's true. And <laughs> now, we, now we're back to these hands are still trying to get, their, you know, they kind of grabbed onto your legs as you ran over there, and you notice that they're still trying to crawl up your legs. Uh, w, you're not sure if you're experiencing one of your cocaine-induced hallucinations, but there are disembodied mm -hmm. hands trying to crawl up your legs. You want to dodge? You want to fight back? What do you want to do? No, well, much as I want a hand job, I'll try to dodge. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a terrible line. Okay, go. <laughs> of course, it's a terrible line. It's also the failure I deserve. <laughs> Seventy-one. <laughs> Seventy-one. Okay, still the same thing. My goodness. All right, Wexler, same thing. They're still trying to get at you. I'll there's shoot. A, there's only the one. Okay. Yep. Um, um, do I take damage now, or you'll let me know? Oh, it failed. Time? It failed, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> so, that was not... Wait, you... I missed. I took the bonus die, and I still got a 33 out of 30. Okay, let's see what happens here. 45. Okay, so this will do... This should... Oh, my mouse disappeared. It does that every once in a while. So that will kill your aiming, and you take three points of damage. What that what's happened is this one's crawling up inside of your leg, and you can feel the claws, the fingernails are like trying to dig in, and you can see like rivulets of blood start coming down and pooling on your sock um, as this thing is coming down and trying to get you. Okay, so that's them. 75, 70, 65. Uh, Claude, oh, okay, Claude Owen... You guys see he's he's kind of watching with amusement as you two guys are going after the um, Zippo lighter. And you guys notice he's got a scalpel in his hand. And he reaches up and he takes the scalpel and he drags it across his throat. And it's just exploding with blood, just pouring down him. And he screams, watch, as he collapses to the ground. And that's all he does this turn. So where were we? Let's say 60, uh, 55, 50. All right, we're going to have Langley is going to take a, he's coming after Dakota again. So go ahead and if you want to fight back or whatever. I'm going to yell something about his king. Okay, so it's just a normal success. Okay, you're going to take three points of damage. Because it's a maximum, it's an extreme success, and it's non, non, whatever, non impaling, but you take maximum damage. All right, and then that would be. At which point do we become unconscious? When you're at one, well, when you go to zero, 
you're going to have to roll your constitution, I think. No, that's not right. Hang on. I read this just earlier today, and now you've asked me a question that I'm beginning to doubt my own reading. Bear with me one second here. Where are you? How many points you got left? I'm at four. Oh, yeah, you're not dead. You're not unconscious yet. If you ever take half of it at once, then you you will fall unconscious. Okay. Uh, if the key... Hang on. Zero points the effects. At zero points, uh, if only regular damage has been taken, the character doesn't die and will heal in time. If the character has taken a major when he's dying, uh, cumulative damage ceases to be tracked. Uh, further damage is generally ignored, but any sense... Okay, if any amount of damage greater than the character's maximum hit point... That's not right. Hang on. Regular damage, the effect. I think it's when you're at zero, you fall unconscious, as long as you haven't taken a major wound. Okay. So let's just do it that way. I don't want to keep looking at this stuff. All right, so that would be, so he falls to the ground. I Let me just keep working my way down. I think every, so Brian, you've taken your turn. Aubrey, of you and Jim, I'm just going to let both you guys roll because you're going to be before, um, you're going to be go before Wexler. So, Go ahead if you if you're still going for the Zippo lighter. Well, I don't know. Sunken cost fallacy. Should I go for my twenty percent chance to go on ahead and pick up the lighter again, or uh, do you see what I'm saying? Well, or, I think, or I am, think I, was, or am I being a foolish or am I being a foolish gamer? I think it was thirty percent because if you're at sixty dexterity, then all you have to do is make a hard success, and that's that's half of your roll, so 30 would get you a success. Yeah. I mean, it's up to you. Mm. You guys could well, all just run. Uh, well, I feel like we're, we're like, um, like, it's right in front of us now. And if I do the equivalent of aiming, it's right in front of us now. It I should be able to carefully pick it up. It being, yeah, if you want to take this round to carefully aim, I will let you roll with a, a bonus die next time. I'll let you aim okay. at trying to pick it up. That's fine. That'll work. Okay. That's so you, what I'll do. You guys see him close one eye, stick his tongue out, and slowly start reaching towards the thing. Um, by the way, I just noticed what time it is. We're 30 minutes over. Do you guys want to just take it as red? I mean, I, we can play this thing out, but I'll... It, I can already tell you this is going slow enough. It's probably going to take another 20 minutes. Um, play it out or just summarize? Just narratively think, summarize it. Because I think you can tell what... Uh, I what know what you're trying to do. do right? Yeah, what yeah, do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're I'm, at, I'm okay with you but narrating it out. Okay, so you guys eventually grab the Zippo right when Claude stands back up and he looks stronger his eyes are fiercely intelligent, and he screams, It worked! And he turns to you guys with the scalpel, and right at the time he does that, you flick the, the Zippo, the wall explodes in fire. All the extra chemicals in the room are highly volatile as well, and pretty soon the whole room is catching on fire. You guys all turn and run out, and you see these these hands... You know, they can't move as quickly, and they begin to catch fire. And Owen just screams, No! And he, he got, <coughs> his hands go up. Sorry, I started choking. His hands go up. <coughs> He's trying to save his, his work. Man, that's not a good... Don't ever have that happen while you're narrating. Well, it's all the smoke in there. And he I falls to his knees. Yeah, he falls to his knees, and he's holding his papers, and he's trying to gather them around. I just want just one more day. I just needed one more day that Frank Charlton, that... And he starts using language, and he is completely consumed by fire. You guys are running up the stairs, and there's just this huge amount of smoke that's billowing out. Lang Langley kind of walks slowly, lumbering after you. Eventually, he just kind of falls like sort of the Frankenstein monster that's completely consumed. And the entire thing sort of collapses in upon itself. And the fire 
spreads to the whole barn that eventually collapses, you're left with these sort of deep scowls <clears throat> standing outside next to your car as this thing just burns furiously and you don't see any movement, you don't see anything coming out of there. And you all look at each other and I guess you can decide what you're going to tell the people about what you found. But Claude Owen is dead and he doesn't appear to be coming back and whatever he was doing that was succeeding in bringing people back, he was apparently on the verge of making it work. And you managed to stop him just as it ended and so with that the flames you guys standing and what did we just witness here um you guys can all roll a d10 for me oh you mean i got out of there alive all of you did yeah i'm just gonna, oh, I didn't expect I'm, I just didn't gonna, I'm just gonna let all of you guys run oh. i narrate good, oh. good endings very good. Uh, eight for All that right. D10 roll. Whatever you just rolled is how much Cthulhu Mythos knowledge you've just attained. Wow, nice. And that means you've got a new maximum of your on. sanity. So, All right, so you guys will make your way back into town, tell whatever stories you need. You go back to your normal life. You spend several months trying to forget about this until this spectacular meteor shower occurs several months later and this particularly large meteor goes streaking across the sky and the assumption is it actually survived entry into our atmosphere and landed somewhere north of Arkham and the story begins as the astronomy professors are creating search parties because they want this meteor and they think there's a great deal of knowledge to be gained and they want to find it, they want everybody to volunteer, and you guys are contacted directly, and um, there's a group called the Society for the Exploration of the Unnatural that that has just started in Arkham. It's based on Miskatonic University campus, and somehow you get the impression they know that you saw something unusual in the uh, fire, and they've asked you to consider joining and you've been asked to volunteer to go find this meteorite, and that's what we'll what, that's what we'll start playing into next week, um, whenever you guys take on the next mission, the next investigation. Mm -hmm. So very good. I don't know how we took this long, to be honest with you. This the guy that created this said this is only supposed to go two sessions. I'm like, yeah, well, we turned it into seven, so <laughs> it was great. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I didn't realize what time it was, or I would have let it played out, but. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you guys for listening, and we will start the next. It's called The Hills, Ri the Hills Run Wild, I think, is the, is the name of it, and it's got my own sort of, what, customizations in it, but we'll see how it goes next week. So you guys take care, and thank you very much for paying attention listening. We'll see you next time.